betrayal, sir. I don't feel that. But I was told I would have command of our next blockade runner. I... I've seen myself on the bridge taking this ship from Japan into Bordeaux. Do you know where I see myself? In Bremen, at home in bed with my wife. Hmm. You have a wife, Cruiser? No, sir. Or perhaps here in Tokyo it's just as well. Hmm? Mr. Cruiser, this cargo. God almighty, how we need this cargo. And Captain Miller is a man of such experience. Look here. Tomorrow my experience puts me here, on a fine new Japanese submarine. I'm to show our friends the wolf pack tactics we use to erase so much Allied shipping in the Atlantic. An assignment I do not cherish, you see. I'm grateful for the way you put it, Admiral Wendler. The way I put it is that first officer or admiral we do as ordered. Incidentally, if uh, everything goes according to plan, our paths may cross. Sir, Captain Miller's here to see you. And he's impatient. It's a bad morning. Nobody's satisfied. Ask Captain Miller to come in. Admiral Van Dorf. In the Merchant Navy, the captain chooses his own crew. What are you doing here? I'll be damned if I'll ship with these two murderers. Two more assault with deadly weapons. This one. Theft of government property. Another an outright political enemy. <laughs> it's also a good way to return these bastards to Germany for the punishment they deserve. Sorry, I cannot accept them. But there are only a handful, Captain. With I don't want a handful of maggots in my soup. Now, we've given you every reliable man we could find. And must I remind you, Captain Miller, that you can't afford to protest? Hey, Mr. Cruiser, will you leave the two of us alone? Stand right there, Mr. Cruiser. Admiral Vandal is about to say that my last ship was torpedoed in the Indian Ocean. Well, that's common knowledge. That's no at the blame. time of the attack, I had a skin full of rum. Captain Miller reports that he stood on the bridge for three days with a festering jaw. It was lanced. Drugs were administered. No avail. Therefore, Captain Miller tried liquor. It is said to have afforded him some relief. The torpedo didn't know I had been drinking. We cannot interview that torpedo. Be satisfied that the Admiralty retains confidence in you. Believe me, Miller, take the ship. You'll save yourself a lot of consequences. I can take any of your consequences. I wasn't referring to you. But you see, at home, they are inclined to believe that certain behavior runs in the family. My son? Uh, he's on duty in the North Sea area, isn't he? My son is a splendid officer, one of the finest. They wouldn't. Yes, Miller, they would. They have. The cargo, Mr. Crane, is perhaps the single most important item in the world today. Uh, Colonel Stutter, would you like some more tea? No, thank you. The cargo, Mr. Crane, is rubber. Rubber? A ship called the Ingo will leave Tokyo carrying 7,000 tons of raw rubber. 7,000 tons of rubber, Mr. Crane, will keep the entire German army on wheels for at least three months. Hmm. Is this music disturbing you? No. Would you like to hear the second movement? No. I'm glad you admire my painting. I bought this Kirschner in, uh, in Zurich. Yeah, I paid too much for it, but I couldn't resist it. You come from Zurich, Mr. Crane? Yes, my family lives there. Mr. Crane, you have no family. You're a German, Herr Schroeder. 
You've been living in the British Dominion here in India on a forged Swiss passport for the last three years. You were a reserve officer in an engineer demolition battalion. The day you received orders to report for duty, you turned your back on your country and managed to leave Germany with most of your funds. I'm not surprised uh, that you found me. Um, I'm only surprised that it took so long. Oh, but it didn't. We've not had any need for you until now. What will astonish that is that you, you never gave your services to the Allies, but buried yourself out right here. Buried myself? I think I have here all that I could possibly want. I have my books and my music and a modest art collection and a visit from a beautiful lady from time to time. And uh, what I value most is my privacy. Now, let me, let me save you some valuable time. Colonel Stata, I, I, I have no intention of blowing up this ship. We don't want you to blow up that ship. It's precisely what we don't want. We want you to save that ship. To, uh, to save it? Herr Schroeder, as you know, the Allies are desperately short of rubber. As much as the Germans want that cargo, we want it more and we mean to capture it. Yes. Well, why do you come to me? German blockade runners have orders to scuttle at the approach of an enemy. But if an engineer, a demolitions expert, boards that ship and disarms all the scuttling charges, when the captain goes to scuttle, he's going to be a very surprised captain. And also surprised will be the engineer if he lives to a ripe old age. Oh, obviously, there are ways in which this adventure might not succeed. Yeah, perhaps a thousand, hmm? But if it does, the Allied governments are going to be very grateful indeed. And if it fails? The Germans would shoot him. We would have preferred a professional, of course, but there wasn't a qualified man anywhere near Tokyo to get him there in time. Schroeder, if we capture 7,000 tons of rubber, it's going to save thousands of lives and shorten the war against Hitler. Colonel Stetter, aside from the obvious suicidal aspects of your scheme, I, I personally don't believe that war is ever a solution to political conflict. What do wars ever prove? Men, women, and children are slaughtered, and a generation later, friends are enemies, and enemies are friends, and the whole stupid cycle starts over again. Certainly, I have great appreciation for your noble effort and your interest to save uh, thousands of lives. But excuse me, uh, if I seem to be concerned for my own life. It's unfortunate you're rated so highly by the Gestapo, Schroeder, because I'm told their penalties for deserters are somewhat more theatrical than ours. No, they uh, hold you under house arrest until after the war is over, and then they, they give you a fair trial, as they do in England, I'm sure. You realize you're my prisoner. I can have you transported back to England and parachute you out of an RAF plane over Germany. At the same time, a valuable English officer, held by the Germans, will be dropped over England. Exchange of hostages is as old as war itself. Perhaps uh, blackmail is a little older, hmm? I thought the Holy British Empire indulged in more modern ethics. Some arrangements are being made for you to board that ship in Tokyo. But even... If I'm put aboard that ship, it still might reach Germany. That's right. Or you may not be able to disarm all the charges, and the ship might be scuttled. In which case, you're likely to drown. Or be rescued by the Germans. Or by the Allies. In that event, we'll still be able to make use of you. Colonel Stetter, you are morally degenerate. In your case, I can't say that I'm bothered by any moral nausea. No, I'm afraid the success of the mission is your only hope. Couldn't 
you have found a more obvious place in Calcutta? Like a public comfort station? What did you expect? I'd hope for something a little more subtle. Perhaps you'd prefer one of our local brothels. That would have at least given me some compensation for the inconvenience. On the return trip, my dear fellow. If you return. That they are cold bastard. I was born on a chilly island. Personal effects. A picture of your wife and family. Some German money. Your wedding ring. Book matches from your favorite bar in Berlin. More background, further instructions, bits and pieces. Your duck shunt. Don't you have some uh, sauerkraut and uh, knockwurst in there for me? Your insignia, displayed at all times. You're a standard leader, a top rank member of the SS. You're arrogant, rude, brutal, conceited, which should not be difficult for you. Perhaps you would like to hear me sing the horse pestle song. Well, that won't be necessary. This is a chart used by German merchant ships the first 3,000 miles outside Tokyo. We've learned the course of yours. If you place this pin at latitude 14 degrees north, longitude 175 east, as you see, it makes a circle. Now, depending on winds and currents, your ship will enter this area 12 to 14 days out of Japan. And within it, waiting for you, will be units of the American Navy. What if uh, my ship is delayed? Well, that's a fair question. Our friends will be able to wait until the 16th day. So you see, you have a full 48 hours leeway. Oh, nice. The code name for that area is the Kyle Circle. And for this operation, you will be known as Kyle. Kyle. How many scuttling charges are there on the ship, and where are they located? That's your riddle. We can't be expected to know everything. The crew believes this to be a routine passage down the China Sea. Yes, for a while, sir, only the captain, you and I are to be aware of our destination. There are some observations. Yes, sir. I like to whistle. There's a superstition about whistling on a ship. Heed it. I'm not on a ship yet. Ah. Stay in character, Mr. Kyle. I'm sorry, but... Uh, yeah, best to enlighten some of the staff, hmm? Correct, standard leader. Goodbye and good luck. I'll leave that. Mr. Kyle. Good luck. Hold your fire. Little tram ship in Hong Kong. Akama. Injured man coming aboard. Yes, sir. When do you leave us? At town seven. Uh, Mr. Milkright. Sir? After town seven, plot course 76. 76, yes, sir. Right. Captain, I have the honor to present Mr. Hans Kyle of the Reich Security Agency, Division 4E5, Far East Zone. Oh, yes, I was told a few hours ago there'd be such a passenger. You've assigned Mr. Kyle a cabin? 
Yes, sir. Hope you'll be comfortable. Check with Dr. Ambach and let me know when that man is ready to report for duty. He wasn't that badly hurt, sir. Just take care of it. Captain Mueller, I was wondering if you had a few moments, if perhaps we Doctor could... Doctor will clear the harbor. There'll be plenty of time to get acquainted, Mr. Carr. Good. I was looking forward to it. Well, I'm not. After all, I know your purpose about my ship. Mr. Brana, starboard engine, half speed. Starboard, half speed! Political soldiers are the lifeblood of a nation, even more than the military. Wonderful observation. You are a member of the party, Mr. Cruz? Of course I am. Hmm. Well, Captain, I hope that everything is in order now. It is. Good. I see you're starting your assignment early. Hmm? You're wasting your time. I don't plan to have an infected jaw this trip. Frankly, I'm quite surprised they thought your department had better use for its men. You don't have to be discreet. Mr. Cruiser knows all about it. About what? Well, I can see why the security office felt advised to take precautions. Though I'm certain that the captain's drinking and the loss of his last ship had no connection. I don't know about this, but uh, I assure you this is not the reason why I'm on the ship. Not at all. Which still means you'll be looking over my shoulder. I don't know why you uh, persist in this. It's a long voyage, and I, I hope that we could find some common interest. Do, do you play the chess, sir? I do. Well, then we, we perhaps could have a game. Mr. Carl, I have neither the time nor the desire to play chess with you. Captain Mueller, uh, I, I'm not accustomed to unfriendliness, huh? and uh, I, quite frankly, I was really not prepared for it. Do you have some particular quarrel with the SS captain? I'm sure that you SS gentlemen are very valuable on dry land, but on this ship I have a job to do. But how does my being on board the ship uh, affect your job? My crew. Word's gotten around that you're aboard, and they're scared to death. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Now, ridiculous or not, I shall have to ask you to confine yourself to your cabin, the deck, and the salon. And I want you to interfere with their work or mine. Do you mean... Uh, am I to understand that I will not be free to... to walk around the ship? Yes, just that. The Admiralty described you as a passenger. So you'll have all the privileges and the restrictions of a passenger. They fail to describe the captain as not only foolish, but ill-mannered. Well, that's their blunder. Captain Mueller, I don't have to put up with this sort of rudeness. And I would like to suggest that you show a little more respect for me, for my authority, and for the organization that I represent. I am the master of this ship. You are under my authority here. Mr. Cruiser, you will attest that the captain is not only insulting, but uncooperative. I will make a full report of this when we reach Bordeaux, hmm? Bordeaux? The only report I care about, if we reach Bordeaux, is that Captain Mueller brought the Ingo on a 15,000-mile journey through enemy waters with a precious cargo successfully, even if he didn't play chess on the way. I hope that our relations would be pleasant, uh, but uh, I see that they won't. 
Good night. If you will allow me also, Captain. I'm due on the bridge. Okay. It was outrageous. Yeah, perhaps. Hmm? Allow me to apologize for it. No, no, you're very kind, but uh, this is not your concern. But uh, anyway, I, I, I don't intend to comply. Unfortunately, standard leader, I must urge you to do as he says. He is in command. Until Bordeaux. Until Bordeaux.
the stoker. Oh, yeah. oh, I hope my bird is disturbing you, sir. Not at all. You are one of the men who was brought on the ship on the town. Yes, sir. What is the charge against you? I am a political prisoner, sir. Political prisoner? Falsely accused. Sir, not falsely accused. the men knew the truth. You will address them after the drill, then? I wouldn't make a speech at the Fuhrer's wedding. Address them yourself. Have you seen our passenger? He's supposed to be at number two. No, but I'm sure he can take care of himself. Oh, I'm sure he can, but he's supposed to be at his position. Perhaps he's waiting for a personal invitation. station, Dr. Ambar. Oh.
Constables, restore them. Officers and crew, assemble on Father. Officers and men, assemble on the fore deck. Why have you been? Attending your boat well. Are you telling me you've been here all along? Certainly not. There was no uh, life jacket in my cabin, so I was obliged to find one for myself. I managed to locate one in this... Uh, this machine shop of yours, which uh, incidentally is a filthy hole. That cabin wasn't supposed to be occupied. <laughs> well, we're not being torpedoed, are we, Captain? It's just a boat drill, hmm? For security purposes, you have been told that our destination was the China coast. That is not a fact. This voyage of four will not end in a few days. It will require another 80 days. Journey's end will be a port in France, occupied gloriously by our countrymen. From now on, all watches will be armed. Not the slightest misconduct will be tolerated. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cruiser. That's uh, fine. The watches will not be armed. Uh, the first officer mistook one of my orders. As to those of you with bad records, you will toe the line, as we all will. Dismissed. Sir, I have never captained a prison ship before. I don't intend to now. How is your insane friend today? <laughs> Fine, sir. Hmm. Well, this is my first voyage on a freighter. I find it interesting. Very interesting. What is this machine here? The winch. Winch? The winch for lifting the cargo. Oh, yes. This is a cargo hold. Hmm? Yes, sir. How did it get in? Right from the deck, sir. Once you get the hatch cover off. You mean there are no connecting doorways down below from one cargo hold to the other, huh? Yes, sir. Not on a freighter, sir. Better be careful. One day this bird of yours might fly away with a seagull. <laughs> I promise you, before the ship reaches port, there's going to be one data as bastard on it. Come in. Oh, standard leader. Come in. I hope I'm not uh, disturbing. Certainly not standard leader. Take a seat. Thank you very much. Care for a cigarette? Uh, yeah, no, no, I think I won't. Have a cigarette. My coming here is a gamble, but I think I have not made a mistake about you. May I speak uh, directly? By all means. <clears throat> I think that uh, neither you or I are pleased with. Uh, I hope you won't be offended if I ask to see your party card. My party card? Yeah. The 
for my party card. <laughs> well, I see you've kept up your yearly contributions. Yes. You know, what constantly confounds me is the irony of careers and the merchant service. We have a man like uh, uh, Müller at the top, and while a man like yourself, a genuine German, in, in, in the best sense of the phrase, is uh, first officer. Yes. But uh, I did not knock on your door to flatter you. Now, what is your opinion of Captain Mueller's approach to discipline? Discipline? Hmm. He approaches it as if you were carrying a cargo of kimonos. Exactly. Now, you must realize by now that I'm not just a passenger. <laughs> Certainly. And I'm not here to count the bottles of wine that uh, Mueller drinks. It is necessary for me to inspect this ship, all of it. And uh, I prefer that Captain Mueller is not made aware of this or anyone else. Yes. And you would be kind enough to arrange this for me. Now I must ask to look at your party card, standard leader. Please drop the title when we are alone. May I see it? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm... I'm happy that you asked me this, because if you didn't, I would know that you were not being as alert as you might be. May I ask the purpose of your request? I'm sorry, but... Under the circumstances, I cannot afford to take anyone into my confidence. But, uh, thank you. I can tell you this, which is uh, something that you are already aware of, and that is that there are political prisoners on board. Hmm? And if I were a political prisoner, uh, I would not be completely disappointed if the ship did not reach Bordeaux. I feel I should oblige you, Mr. Kyle, but to act contrary to the orders of my superior. Yeah, certainly, I understand, but if you should feel the need for my support at any time... I appreciate that very much, but I must think it over. Yeah, naturally. This is, uh, this is logical. But while you, uh, you think it over, I would like to remind you of uh, our first allegiance. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Thank you so much. Good night. Mr. Kyle? Mr. Kyle? I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir, but this is impossible for me. I'm not prepared for a lengthy voyage. Would you use your influence, sir? I... I don't believe I understand. Well, I'll have to be returned to Tokyo. We must put about. You have a rather original sense of comedy, Dr. Amba. I know. I sound absurd. And I'm sorry to bother you with this, but I have problems. Certain... Problems. Dr. Ambach, we all have problems, hmm? But, Mr. Kyle, these are extremely serious problems. So, in this case, I suggest that you swim back, because it only takes three weeks, and uh, the water is not cold this time of year. This is Radio Nordreich in the heart of the Fatherland, bringing you 
music and personal messages to our gallant fighters far away on lonely seas. Touching, Hello, isn't it? Brother, you Get used to it, brother. It'll follow us all the way. Good to be back with you after all these years, Doc. Look at him. Ten pounds of trousers for two pounds of rump. <laughs> You weren't so funny back in Cape Town, were you? When you came crying to me with a very far gone venereal disease, which I found almost impossible to cure. <laughs> we interrupt this broadcast to bring you a bulletin of special interest. United States aircraft today attempted their first raid on German territory. No damage was sustained. Our fighter plane shot down 11 of the enemy bombers. They better show them, huh? Of course. Not what are 11 planes to the Americans, but they claim they're going to build 50,000 in a year. The guard was always a pessimist. Senior grade. If Adolf Hitler is steering towards war, he is a lunatic. Letter to a lady friend, 1935. The lady liked to save letters, and the Gestapo likes to collect all kinds of odd documents. I have that report in your service pile, no right. But I was much younger. I don't feel that way any longer. Yeah, just make sure that your change of heart is permanent, Milkright. And in the future, make sure to take up with less sentimental ladies. <laughs> I knew a girl who sang that song. A girl back home. Home? It's been almost two years. Sir? A message from Tokyo. Turn that damn radio off. Enemy ships reported your vicinity. Camouflage your vessel as British freighter immediately. to take her completely into my confidence. Sabotage. Very clever work. Now I think you know why I'm on the ship. Yes. Uh, that's efficient. Two or three could probably sink the ship, so we will have to cover them all. Now, uh, how many are there in, uh, in this hole? Two. Where are they located? One's over there, end of this opening. 
Run a cable from the aftermath to this deck. Yes, Captain. Last one's down here. It's in the barrel here. Barrel? Yeah. Large. Large? Yeah. A few hundred tons from Okinawa. Making margarine and candles. <laughs> we even have a small shipment of Ulam tea. Thank you. Uh, tell me, Cruiser, where, where is the master switch for these charters located? In the wheelhouse. In the wheelhouse? Yeah. Well, then I'm sure the captain has the only key, hmm? Of course. I think this one has not been tampered with. It's all right. Twelve charges and the only two damaged on the engine. Oh, donkey man. I make short work of him. Wait, 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 wait. Whoever it is, we watch them play out their hand, hmm? But the captain ought to be notified. Certainly not. Under these circumstances, everyone is suspect, hmm? even you. She's on course and all is well. Where were your ship going? Australia. What is your occupation? I am a surgical aid. Why were you going to Australia? I was a member of a medical team. You were born in Berlin? Yes. And your parents, also born in Germany? Yes. So, a German girl on an enemy vessel. Whatever gave you the absurd idea I was German? If you're not a German, what then? I am anti-German. Captain Lux still with us. The fog is coming in a lot thicker. You know the shanty of blockade runners out of Tokyo, Bolson. Nine days out, all will be fair. Ten days out, sailor beware. <laughs> yes, sir. Captain, the steward has just made a strudel. Good. I'd love it with a cup of coffee. again. Cylinder head pressure is normal, revs increasing. You must be getting very bored, Mr. Kyle. 
I'm sorry we don't have shuffleboard or a band. <laughs> well, I've been able to occupy myself, Captain. I've been studying the animal life in my bunk. And the wind and waves. Well, the wind and the waves have been very good to us. They certainly have. We're nearly a full day ahead of schedule. Yeah, and the old tub is still glued together. So help me, I'm beginning to get fond of her. Sir, the number of ships, two different codes, very strong. Signals are much stronger, sir. There might be a city block away in this porridge. Cruiser, get you. Shino! There, in the two camps. Englishman. Proof D class of Lambert and Holt. Englishman. Like ourselves. Three ships on board bow! Convoy! Convoy. And we're in the middle of it. What do we do now, sir? It's a cruiser. 20 degrees to starboard. Keep parallel to the convoy. Yes, sir. 20 degrees to starboard. We bluff, young man. And we believe in miracles. Captain! Captain! There's a destroyer. Heading straight for us. It's American. Benz class. Four guns, ten torpedo tubes. Makes 36 knots. Good. Send them a citation. Captain, it's a matter of minutes. Mr. Cruiser, sound the general alarm. Don't sound the horn. You may be on routine sub-patrol and bear off. All men to station except radio, engine room, and bridge. Sir, radio message received. Destroyer wants identification. Tell Mr. Neeson to send British Stonehenge in convoy and send it slowly and gobbled. Gobbled, sir? Mr. Neeson knows the meaning of the word. Now move. Yes, sir. Can somebody bring me a cigar. <laughs> Fake pretty soon. We'll be sent to a prisoner's walk and maybe in Hawaii, in the sun. Come on, darling. Take us. Come, take us, darling. Come on. Donkey man, what are you waiting for? Let's go. First, I've got a piece of business to take care of.
immediately for boarding. Here, sir. Mr. Cruiser, hold engines. Hold engines, sir. Hold engines. Hold engines. Engines holding. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! It's cutting, sir. Get on, I'll take care of it. can deliver. Half to starboard. Half to starboard. We'll make for that fog bank. Maybe we can sneak out of here. Helmsman, what's your reading? One, one, zero, sir. For two points. For two points, sir. Mr. Make all right, Mr. Cruiser. Sir? Radical change of course. Which alternative, sir? Put us on course better. Yes, sir. Mr. Colonelson. Yes, sir. They'll send our description to every skiff between here and Midway. Call Boston to my quarters. We change camouflage again. Yes, sir. Mr. Kyle. Yes? I have misjudged you, Mr. Kyle. I never for one moment thought that you might try to save my life. You gentlemen of the SS don't usually display the humanity of a sand crab. Well, to, to be honest with you, I, I couldn't help myself. Well, gentlemen, was it God or the Führer that brought the fog? <laughs> <laughs> Thank both. And the captain as well. I must say, he used his wits. Yeah, he was uh, brilliant. Yeah. Milkright, in which direction are we headed? Sorry, our course is classified. Don't you think that perhaps by now I'm an exception to the general rules? As navigation officer, I can't allow that just for once use a little common sense. It's your responsibility, sir. Okay. This is our present position. Yeah. This was the old course, almost due east. Now this will be our new course. See? Yeah. Is it uh, coffee over there? Yeah. Could I have a cup, please? Of course. Thank you. Do you take sugar? One teaspoon full. It's a coffee. Oh, thank you very kind. Yeah, now, this is a new car. This is a new car, yeah. Well, we, we lose a lot of time. Oh, we? yeah, several days. You must have dropped your pen. No, no, I was, I never can measure distance on a map. I was trying to find out how far it is from here to here. Oh, that's very easy. Just a moment, from here to here. It's 220 miles. Mm. 
Yeah, it's strange. It, it's only about two inches, and yet it's uh, further than the, what, the Leipzig to Düsseldorf. Yeah, you're right. Uh, this island is not. Uh, it's not dangerous to go so close. Oh no, it's uninhabited. It's no tactical value for us, or the Americans. Yeah. It has such a strange shape. It's like a starfish. <laughs> What are you laughing? Oh, that's its name. Starfish Island. Yeah, ridiculous. But this is certainly interesting. I've never seen it before. Kuz, would you uh, excuse me, please? I feel oh, sure, a bit late. Sure, sure, thank you. Swindle is over. But Swindle, it's damn plain that you don't want this ship to reach Bordeaux. What do you want of me? We want to hear what you've got to offer. And if we don't like it, we turn this over to Kruse or the captain. This guy. How many are there of you? Oh, we have four others. Four? And there are no officers? No. How long have you been together with these men? We started to talk you on the camouflage. And then I saw you jam the whistle and realized you also were in the fight against Hitler. I see I am surrounded by patriots. Hmm? Not these others. If they reach Germany, they would be finished. Yeah, I think you will be finished also. Yes, I know. I keep wondering if that's why I was assigned here on the ship. Well, we all have the same goal to keep our heads on our shoulders. Every time we bump into each other, it's near a scuttling charge. Am I right? Yeah. I was trying to disarm them. What's your plan? Now there is no plan. Before we change course, we are headed straight for an Allied ambush. What, an ambush? Yeah, there were American warships waiting for us, but uh, now it's finished. What is your plan? We haven't any plan. Well, there's only one chance, then. This uh, island, star something. Starfish Island? Starfish Island. How far is it? About 3,000 miles. How many days? Oh, roughly 15 days. 15? How close do we come to it when we pass? About 70 or 80 miles. Just a second, sir. Excuse me, sir. I was just lying down. It's all right. Mikhail, what I need is a report of all the winds and currents of the new course, Peter. Yes. As soon as possible. Yes, I will do it. Okay. Would it be possible when we pass this island to take one of these uh, rubber boats and put it over the side? If it's night and nobody sees us, the chances of making the island would still be 15 to 1. We, 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 we must take whatever chance we have. Now, there are three scuttling charges that I have not yet disarmed. I will continue to disarm the charges in the event that we are intercepted by an Allied warship. Now, 
Are we all agreed? Yes, we do. the steamship Christina. Thank you, Captain. It's always nice to meet an honest Swedish skipper. <laughs> you must enjoy being a neutral. You're lit up like a Christmas tree. Oh, I'm glad I'm no longer English. You came within a hundred yards of putting a torpedo in my belly. And your destroyers almost put a depth charge down my throat. <laughs> like the stations. Take the station, sir. Take the station. Everybody! Well, I... I can certainly see why you were so obstinate back in Japan. I now hand you custody of 15 prisoners. Interrogation report on each, as well as one on the girl. Nothing is spared me. You will find that one very interesting. Mr. Cruiser. Captain. Escort the prisoners to twin decks number five. Yes, sir. Move! Just a minute. Mr. Connelson. I certainly wouldn't put her up with them. Mr. Connelson, take her to my cabin for the time being. Now, Admiral Vendel. I know, I know this new cargo is a burden, Captain. I suppose that's why you radioed the request, but not the reason for this rendezvous. Were you afraid I might get a bit too obstinate this time? We thought of that, Villa. We thought of that. <laughs> well, now that you are here, would you join me for a drink? Fine. I wouldn't have missed this chance to congratulate you personally. Slipping in and out of that convoy, remarkable seamanship. Thank you. Very gratifying for a captain who has to have a keeper on his tail. Keeper? Insist on playing games very well. The passenger you gentlemen put aboard. Someone we put aboard? Hi, 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 Admiral Vandal, Commander Bush. This is my passenger, Mr. Hans Kyle, of the security office. Admiral Vandal, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm delighted, Mr. Kai, to meet you here. Thank you. 
Nice to meet you. Your department didn't notify me of your assignment. Oh, that's strange. I, uh, I presented my credentials to the embassy. Naturally. Well, then your venture was authorized after I left Tokyo. Yeah, perhaps so. Well, uh, anyway, this is not a, a venture. I'm just here as a passenger. Please sit down. Thank you. Where were you before Tokyo? I'm not able to reveal this. Secret information, no doubt. Uh, classified. Gentlemen. I'll wager one thing. When you left port, you didn't expect to run into two officers from the German uh, Admiralty. Never hoped for such luck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as my friend Bernard Weber used to say, if you can imagine the situation, it is... You knew Brigade Leader Weber. Weber? From SS Leadership School. You went there, of course. Oh, yeah, sure. Class of 1938. General Ordenlichter was the commandant then. Uh, are you acquainted with him? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, he was a wonderful man. Class of 38. Well, then you must know Brigade Leader Weber. The chief of political evaluation. Ah, uh, Weber, Weber. Yeah, I, I, I remember him. I see you smoke in English, Prior. An amazing observation. You should be in counterintelligence. <laughs> I am. Really? And frankly, what we would like to determine is what you're doing on board this ship. Well, uh, nothing more important than uh, being a passenger. But I, I, I'm so flattered with your interest. Well, I never did finish my remark about Brigade Leader Weber. The political evaluation chief. Right. <coughs> and the astonishing fact is that he doesn't exist. I invented the man. Of course, it doesn't exist. Gentlemen, I, I don't wish to embarrass you, but uh, really this kind of interrogation technique is uh, childish. Huh? We learned this in the first two weeks of leadership school. But I am fascinated by your curiosity. You would be less fascinated if I told you that perhaps you too are an invention. Standard leader Kyle. Now, gentlemen, if it wasn't for Mr. Kyle, I wouldn't be aboard this ship. He stopped me from scuttling her. She had my hand on the switch. Mr. Kyle thought that I was going to stay with her and did his best to stop me. Now, while he was doing that, your wolf pack blasted the convoy. So you see, if he hadn't delayed me for a few seconds, 7,000 tons of precious rubber would have been at the bottom of the sea. So Mr. Kyle is capable of a nice sentimental gesture. That doesn't clear up my doubts. I see no reason to discuss matters that concern only my department. And now, Admiral Wendell, let me notify you in very simple terms. The security office will be informed in every exact detail as to your interference. Is that clear? Mr. Kyle, I will not now, permit you. Gentlemen, there's no real problem. All you have to do is radio Berlin. Yeah, excellent idea. This is uh, logical. Hmm? Captain Muller, are you willing to be answerable for Mr. Khan? Yes. I'll accept that. I don't think we need trouble, Berlin. I realize that we have offended you. But you must understand our need for caution. If I didn't, who would? At any rate, my regrets. And thanks to you for your excellent hospitality. Good night, Mr. Cannon.
Naturally, I read you Berlin. By this time tomorrow, you should have a complete report. Meantime, keep an eye on him. Thank you for your gesture. It was very kind. You gentlemen wouldn't trust your own embalmer. <laughs> Enjoy your next 24 hours. They may be your last. They're checking with Berlin. Did the officer who brought you here ask your name? No. Good. You must promise to keep your mouth shut. Keep my mouth shut about what? About the fact that you're... A Jewess. Is it so difficult to say the word? I have nothing against you because you're Jewish. One can't choose one's parents. Is that what you mean? No, that is not what I mean. Sit down. Sit down. That's my son. He'd like you. On the other hand, he might prefer to lop off my head. Why do you resent being treated with respect? Let's see. Your name, Esther Levy. Levy won't do. What shall we call you? Cohen? Shapiro? So there's a long trip ahead. Put a lid on your pride. It's worth it to make yourself comfortable. And let you feel decent. If you wish. Well, then lend me a needle and thread. I'd like to make this outfit a little more attractive for the concentration camp. When we reach Bordeaux, this report will be lost. And with luck, perhaps you may find a way to lose yourself there, too. I'm sorry. It's the most I can do. Do you want to sleep with me? Are you just doing this because you're kind-hearted? Young lady, even this kind of impotence will not stop me from treating you simply as another member of the human race. All right. In America, I lived with a family named Goddard. No, Fred, but since you are on the bridge, you can take the captain by surprise. Alone? No, Beck will be with you. Uh, Donkeyman, you and Hoffman will overpower the guards on the rear deck. But how do you get those prisoners with us? Huh? Well, I will have to find a way to speak with them as soon as possible. I would first like to consider all the risks before There making. is nothing to consider. Consider how your face will look with a piano wire around your neck when the crew sends his report into the Gestapo. But without those prisoners, we have no chance. Not even with them. If we take over the ship, we are only two days away from the American Navy. You know what looks very good to me now? Starfish Island. Don't give them. You said the odds against this island were about 15 to 1. What are they against this plan? 14 to 1. Well, we must make a decision. Yes. Ah, 
Miss Garland, sir. This is standard leader Kyle. How do you do? Miss Garland is an American girl. She studied in Germany. Oh? Well, we are delighted to have you with us. Is it, uh, is it my insignia that uh, disturbs her? Hmm? Captain, where is my room? Right here. Well, it's uh, obviously to share the captain's sentiments about the SS. As I told Captain Mueller, it uh, was a long voyage. Yes. Chess partners are very difficult to come by, Mr. Kyle. Uh, evidently. <laughs> Miss Goddard. Miss Goddard? Who is it? It's uh, Mr. Kyle. Could I speak with you in a moment? There is a crack under the door. It should be easy for you to crawl through it. Seven every morning, an officer and two crew members will supervise the prisoner's exercise. After this duty, the weapons will be locked in the ordnance room. Now, I understand the hatch covers over the prisoner's hold were closed last night. You must like steam baths. From now on, the hatch covers will remain partially open, and therefore the regular watch in the area will be armed. I acted for our well-being, sir. Not for the enemies. Well... I won't let it spoil my appetite for breakfast. I'm glad of that, sir. I would like to be there when you try to convince these birds to join the Gestapo. Someday it will be a pleasure to pay a visit to America, huh? This, this will be wonderful. Hmm? Meanwhile, let's eat. Thank you. Keep moving. Let's go. Keep moving. Call the Kaaba. Take them forward to the hospital right away. Do follow them. Captain, emergency! A prisoner's hurt. We can't rouse off the Amba. Get me the morphine. <laughs> uh. It's bad, but not as bad as the racket you're making. What's the matter? There's no morphine here. I'll get it. You can be of use. Go up there and help. Sweating in a dungeon. Your kind always wind up living rich. Oh, shut up. Shut up, you crackpot. We're sick of hearing that garbage. What's that? What do you mean? He means I'm a Jew. Where do you hide the ship's morphine? This damn fever gets me now. Where is the morphine, Mr. Ambach? Morphine? There is no morphine. No, 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 it's mine, it's mine. I brought the ship, my daughter, it's mine. It was mine. It's private property. No, you can't have this. Captain, I'll die without it. I'll die. You'll live, Mr. Ambach. They told me voyage to China coast. Only a few days. They lied to me. I had to take it. 
I had to take it. I had to. Do you want me to clean it now? When a Jewish bitch takes over the sick ward, then... Miss Levy is perfectly able to attend to this. Miss Levy? You know. Have you thought of the effect on the officers and men? I didn't know it was contagious. Now, what do you have to say about this? I think you are out of your mind, but after all, you are the master of the ship. That I am. I'll take care of it. I'm sure you can do it better than I can. You're saying that she'll continue to have a stage room? That you will go on feeding her in the salon? The lady's privileges will remain. Now, the steward will be glad to serve you meals in your cabin if it's all too much for you. I must remind you of the consequences. Oh, I recognize that word. If all Germans had conducted themselves like this, where do you suppose we'd be today? Certainly not where we are now. You are speaking to a party member. This is not a party office. You had better remember there's nothing chopped up against me. Now, not don't even, you carry Not me. even an ounce of Jamaica rum. Now you listen to me. I've been at sea too long for this. I know all your talk. I'll take the responsibility for what I do. You young men who keep the world breathless. It's your turn, I know. But to realize your dreams, you'll need something more than brutality. You'll need, if you can manage it, a little mercy. Now, what could you know of our dreams? intelligence. I'm planning to take over this ship. I don't believe you. You have no choice. You are a Jew on your way to Germany. And if you value your life, you will need my help. And I will need yours. How can I be of help to you? Well, I cannot take over this ship without the American prisoners. And I may need your help to contact them. Why don't you contact them yourself? I am going to try. But the message exposing me is on its way from Berlin. And if it comes by 8 o'clock tonight when the watch changes, then you will have to slip into the hole and persuade them. They, they will not believe any of the men with me. And if our plan succeeds, we will be finished with this idiotic war in a few days. You think this war is idiotic? All wars are idiotic. One is not different from the other. And why are you here? Certainly not by choice. I was blackmailed by a Britisher to the strains of Mozart. I'm not concerned about this war. I don't care who wins or loses. But I am concerned about the Gestapo. You, you, you have no idea what these people are capable of. Oh, like, uh, like maybe force me to have sex with my brother? Or something like that? And maybe kill Bernie if he's not able to have sex with me? And... Then maybe make me sleep with all of them. All 17 of them. Hour after hour after hour after hour after hour after hour after hour. Where? 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 Be still. While you were listening to your Mozart, my mother and my father were marched to the gas chamber where they were killed. You want 
to tell me about the Gestapo. Get out! Get out! Get out! Hello, midshipman Emil Brinkman. Your father, General Franz Brinkman, awarded the Knights Cross with swords. Engineer Mark Leicht, we hope you are listening. Your brother, Major Martin Leicht, awarded the Knights Cross after a daring bombing mission over Rostov and the Russian front. Hello, Captain Rolf Müller on duty in the Far East. Your son, Lieutenant Karl Müller, commanding motor torpedo boat off the French coast, having sunk his fifth ship in the last three months, the latest the solo daylight attack which sank the British vessel Carafas, awarded the Knight's Cross. Wonderful. Congratulations, sir. This is a great moment. It's only fitting to say, sir, that everyone in your command feels on it. That's very kind of you, Mr. Cruiser. Thank you. The Carapaz. Let's see what's her tonnage. She must be in the Talbot. Congratulations, Captain. It must be a proud moment. Thank you, Mr. Kyle. Well, well, Come in, Captain. Right. Right. Congratulations, Captain. Oh, Congratulations. 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 Oh, The ship can hear you. Can they? Tell me about the consequences. Tell me the consequences. Huh? Read me the sentence. What is the worst? To fight war alongside you? Will cry. You poor fool. Raised your voice against them. You don't know about the consequences. Be wonderful if we turn out you're not an SS man at all. <laughs> oh, they'll turn you into one of them, into a cannibal. The most wonderful, gentle boy. Cannibals! Hail! Hail! Take the station. Everybody! Come with me. Tell all the officers to assemble in the salon at once. Yes, sir. The point we spoke about, it's here. And I need you as a witness. are falling apart. I can do it. I will. Sure, he's on a spree, but he'll work it out. I've made this entry in the ship's diary. Captain Miller is mentally and physically irresponsible due to alcoholic overindulgence. Dr. Ambach will confirm this. Uh -huh. I wouldn't take Cokehead's diagnosis of a cockroach. Mr. Branner, Miller's illness is chronic. He was drunk when his last ship was torpedoed. It's hard to believe. Mr. Kyle? Yeah. It's unfortunate, but uh, he is correct. And under these circumstances, I think we must follow Mr. Crusoe. For the protection of the ship, I'm now taking command. Inform your men. Dismiss. Captain, Cruz, Captain. It's for my health. Miller didn't understand this. I can live without it. I'll see you get what you need, but it won't be morphine. This one here was caught trying to sneak into the prisoner's hatch. Oh, 
really? Well, perhaps that's where she prefers to be. Take her down in the hold with the others. Go ahead. I don't mean to interfere, but this is uh, disgusting. Thank you very much for your help, Mr. Khan. You are? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, I have been told that you are not. Correct. Here. So is a false stripe on the sleeve. It's regulations. Yes, sir. we believe this guy, Kyle. What's his plan? You start a fire down here. Then you scream your lungs out. You climb up the ladder, and when you get to the top, you yell, run, scatter. Are you kidding, lady? They'll be waiting up there to shoot us full of holes. No, the fire will confuse the guards, and Kyle's men will overcome them. Oh, honey, you can't win a battle just by yelling. You need guns. Forget guns. Guns, guns. Where are they going to get guns? One of the officers is with us. He'll attack the captain and take the keys to the ordinance room. The whole stunt's cockeyed. Let him try it alone. Shh. They're outnumbered. It's nine against 40. So? So we join them, huh? And then it's only two to one against us. Wait, that's enough for you. Wait, 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 wait. Let's suppose we make this tile circle. We get a cup of coffee and a first-class ticket to the Golden Gate. Then what? Then we get good and drunk. <laughs> Sleep for a month, huh? Get a bathtub of beer. What's yeah, you we'll doing? see if the girls are still at Shanty's bar. <laughs> That's for hero. me. I say I. Well, don't be such a hero. You'll get a kiss and a drink and two weeks shore leave. And after that, you'll be back on the front lines again. Swimming and burning oil and boiling like a mackerel. Well, I say let's vote on it. And I'm for it. What do you I'm say? with you. Good man. Hold what do you say? Huh? I'll go along. Come on, fella. Okay. That's, come on. Huh? Come in. Okay, All right, I'm with you. I'm with Ten, huh? Against five. Majority rule. Yeah. The hell it does! This ain't the Congress. Okay, man, then we'll try it without you. Oh, the hell you will. You blow this and they'll kill us all. Ah, that's not true. Come that's... on, come on. Do you think those bastards will string you up and serve us ice cream just because we laid off? Listen, start a fire here, and they'll be damn sure every one of us is in on it. He's right. Look, I'm sorry. We take the chance, you see, but... Uh... It'd have to be all of us. I'd rather take my chances in a prison camp. Yeah, I'd like to take mine right here. You and me both, too. Don't look so worried, baby. We're all nice guys. Sure. You kept too much to yourself on the old blue dolphin. If you'd spend a little time with us, you might have had some fun. And, baby, we've got nothing but time from now on. Well, you kidding? Get your hands tight. Come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. There's one thing you're good for. Will you join the others? Make them keep their word. Make them keep it.
Mr. Cruiser. Yeah? Sir, a radio message from Admiral Wendell. Wendell? Find the other two. Brunner. Mr. Brunner, take the engine room. Von Nielsen the Fordick. Sensor. Rubber boat. A chips. We can heave it over the side and jump after it. We'll disappear in two minutes. Come on. We can make it. Anybody seen my bird? I can't find him. <laughs> my baby hates the sound of guns. It scares the feathers of him. Where's Kyle? Where's Kyle?
Where is Kyle? He is hiding in the propeller shaft. Move. Take the prisoners below. Yes, sir. Time for this. Why not? Your mutiny has failed. Not yet. You once said that. That the worst consequence would be to have to fight alongside men like Cruiser. There is another way. There's a rendezvous point where American warships are waiting for us at 14 degrees north, 175 degrees east. You have a choice. Whatever else I am, I'm not a traitor. Neither was your son. Get out. Get out. Yeah, I will. Captain, 
do as I say. need that rock for a while. But what is it? What's happened? Well, the lard. It's solidified. Plugged up the hold. How much longer will we remain afloat? Well, it's lasted two hours. Maybe another two. Maybe ten. Unless we break up first. In what direction are we drifting? We couldn't drift that far in days. To take a warship going full ahead a good six, seven hours. Captain Mueller, I don't suppose you would consider sending a radio message for me, hmm? You're not very subtle, Mr. Kyle. They must admire your courage. You're the one with courage, Müller. It takes real courage to see your son turned into a merciless fanatic and still believe in your mildewed concepts of the fatherland. I envy you. I wish I had so much to believe in. You have nothing to believe in. Why did you blow up the ship? Doesn't matter now. <laughs> <laughs> 